Alrighty, all you Farmall Cub lovers. This is my 1955 Farmall Cub low boy, which I just spent the winter cleaning up and painting, getting it ready to be my lawnmower. I've got a belly mower for it. Unfortunately, after I got all this done, I found out that the PTO connection isn't very good. The clutch keeps slipping out very easily. And what I realized was that the PTO shaft actually meets right up with the drive shaft that goes through the transmission, commonly called the clutch shaft, which actually goes through the clutch, of course, as well. Through the transmission, out through the back of the transmission uh, a little ways, and meets up with the PTO shaft, which uh, actually bolts on to this area right here. On the blogosphere, where most of my information comes from because there's very few old tractor mechanics available for me to pick the brain on, uh, talks about what can cause this sort of situation where the PTO will not engage or not stay engaged under load, uh, which is what mine is doing. So what I've discovered so far is that there appears to be absolutely nothing wrong with the PTO shaft or the PTO bearing, which I have here on my workbench. Right here, PTO shaft. These splines are in very good shape. This is what the inside of the shaft looks like. You can see it has a smaller pilot shaft, which meets up with the transmission or clutch shaft. And there should be only about an eighth of an inch of space between the butt end of this shaft and the butt end of the transmission or clutch shaft. I have about five-eighths of an inch of clearance. A couple of the causes could be that the bearing in this area in the, in the uh, clutch plate housing could have moved. Um, but uh, I can see that it did not. The retaining ring is still right in the slot where it should be. The one thing I did notice was that there should be some sort of retaining ring on the uh, inner bearing race, and uh, there is none. However, the slot where that ring is supposed to go appears to be exposed right where it should be, uh, further indicating that the shaft has not moved on the bearing. Uh, so, I know that that's not the reason why there's such a lar large space in between the butt ends of these two shafts. So, <clears throat> in my investigation, I have taken the top plate of the transmission back off again. And looking into the case, I see that the uh, space um, where the uh, main shaft goes out into the back end of the transfer case where the PTO shaft meets. You can see this spline shaft right here, I hope you can, uh, has a pilot, kind of a pilot shaft in it that goes into the rear bearing of the transmission case. And this space right here should be a lot smaller, um, which means that this shaft is actually slid forward. What causes that is that the bearing retainer on the front of the transmission was not put in correctly. It was put in backwards, which means that it allows the bearings to move in their setting in the forward direction, which would account for that extra space that I see between the uh, transmission or clutch shaft and the PTO shaft. Now the reason that has to be so close together is that so that a coupler can actually span a distance. And here is the coupler. This uh, coupler has a set screw in it and this goes on this shaft in just a certain direction. Let me just turn it here. If you notice that uh, one of the splines on the shaft right here has a uh, kind of a flat spot on it right here and the set screw rides in that uh, recess. 
<clears throat> there's a finger that connects to uh, the shifter and that finger goes in this uh, uh, race right here and when you move the shifting lever back and forth it moves this up or it moves it back when it moves it up it connects to the transmission shaft and your PTO is live and when you move it back it breaks that connection and the uh, PTO shaft is free um, so what's happening is I can't throw far enough ahead to get on to the uh, splines on the transmission shaft this is the dilemma and this is what I'm going to fix and unfortunately I'm going to have to take the tractor apart right at the transfer case, transmission case union right here. In the future I'll uh, show the various steps to split this tractor apart. Second day on preparing to split this tractor in two. What have I done? I've done quite a few things. Uh, first of all I did was I blocked the wheels uh, on the front and I also put a wedge in the uh, underneath the uh, engine assembly there because when we split this thing that will want to rock sideways so this keeps it in position so I can remate it up pretty well but it's wedged in there pretty good so I don't think it should move uh, the other thing I did was I blocked up the other end of the uh, torque tube here um, with some blocking I also had to remove the seat platform just so I could visualize what I was doing and actually gives me a little better access to the uh, bolts that hold the torque tube to the transmission there. Uh, and bef because I had to do that I also had to remove this fender uh, and also the seat uh, assembly just so that I could get better access to everything and not risk scratching things up too much. The other thing I did was I also attach the um, put the backing plate and the uh, PTO shaft retainer back in with the PTO shaft. Uh, you have to visualize the two shafts going together through the um, fill plug which is right here and it's a little dark in there but between my flashlight and my camera Hopefully I can kind of show you what I'm concerned about. I don't know if you can see in there or not, but the forward in the very forward area is the end of the transmission shaft sticking out. You can hopefully see the pilot shaft of the PTO going into that and then the um, end of the PTO shaft there. Um, basically that pilot shaft should be nearly invisible. You shouldn't be seeing all of that pilot shaft. So that tells me that something's going on with that transmission shaft. It has slid forward for some reason. I had to also disconnect the brake levers and uh, because I'm going to be rolling this chassis backwards I just put a little tape on the end of them there so I wouldn't be dragging those across on my cement floor. Uh, <clears throat> I had some of these nylon circular straps here which are uh, pretty friendly to painted surfaces so uh, the other thing is I can sort of create kind of like a uh, double sling to give me a little more stability I think when I start pulling the, the two mating surfaces apart there and <clears throat> using a come along and because I have to move this assembly backwards I've sort of made a put a suspended a rail there pretty securely that rail actually goes on my mower deck right now it's serving as a suspension rail uh, for this the back part of the tractor so I'm not exactly sure how much heft I'm going to have on that but um, I needed to have some means of sliding this portion back on the rail as I roll this 
uh, wheel and transmission assembly backwards. So, and I can also do some adjustments with the, the jack, either let it up or down. So hopefully I've got all my ducks in order. Um, so I'm going to attempt that uh, tomorrow. Since I've never ever done this before, I'm being very careful. Uh, also because, you know, I got this brand new paint job on this tractor. <laughs> Just a, a little heart sick that I'm having to go backwards so much here to fix this. But I want to mow grass with this thing and I have to have that PTO working soundly and uh, I don't see any other choice. Stay tuned. Hopefully uh, we'll get this done. Uh, split apart tomorrow and I can uh, visualize what's going on in there. Okay, installment three. As you can see, I did get the back section rolled away. Actually, it was quite a bit less frightening than I thought. Uh, like I said, I had the front end pretty well blocked up. I had to use a jack to kind of just take a little pressure off so that the bolts would come off easy. And that will also help me adjust the position a little bit when I go to realign it. I also used a little uh, screw jack on this side to uh, kind of rock the uh, engine assembly, body assembly back and forth a little bit. Um, but when I got that all done, got the weight distributed, I basically just had to roll this section back it all came out pretty easily one thing I did notice was that the weight on this back section is actually mostly on the tail so I had to reposition my uh, log strap there onto the PTO shaft good thing I put that back on uh, just so that I could uh, hold it up there but um, as you can see it's pretty well balanced I can pick this up with my hand and um, even if that fell off, I doubt anything real catastrophic would happen. So, anyway, got that done. So what I found was exactly what I had feared. Whoever took this tractor apart before put the bearing retainer in backwards. Here's the bearing retainer right here. <clears throat> and you can see there's a protrusion on one side and it's flat on the other. The flat is supposed to go on the outside of the uh, transmission block like that. That holds the bearing uh, deep in its set right there uh, so that it doesn't walk out over time. It was in like this. Um, you know, if that was a weekend mechanic like myself that did that, I forgive you if you were a tractor mechanic. Shame on you. The nice thing is, is that I was able to drive that bearing forward at least a quarter of an inch. And what I've noticed, uh, the bearing on that end was sticking out into the uh, transmission housing about a quarter of an inch. That had walked its way out too. Evidently it's retained by the, the end of the shaft there. And then if we look into the oil filler plug hole, it may be kind of hard to see with this video here, but... Uh, the spacing now on the pilot shaft is a little better than an eighth of an inch, probably a little less than a quarter. And that may be right where it's supposed to be. That will be close enough so that I can get a good coupling with the coupler when I throw it into gear now. And it should operate fine. So uh, shouldn't be that much trouble now to walk these parts back together. They really came apart very easily and I think my setup here is, uh, lends itself to allowing me to carefully uh, reinsert this shaft in the correct position which gets a little tight on the other end as it goes through the clutch. Uh, that is one thing that you want to make sure you don't do when this is apart is to touch that clutch. If you push it in once your clutch plate is going to fall out of position then you're going to be having some real shaft alignment issues there. So. I'm going to put the tractor back together and uh, we'll try out the PTO and I'm pretty confident that everything will work fine. But thank you for watching.